Welcome back. Things are happening. I've been running uh, these two color machines uh, quite a bit lately uh, because this guy here has a problem. So I started having a problem with this uh, a few days ago actually and just turned it off. It's the nice thing about having three color machines is because I can just run it on the other two. Uh, but I need to dive into this uh, and see what's going on. I have a hunch. I know what the problem is. Uh, I just need to open it up and clean it. I'm pretty sure it's a dirty sensor or sensors. Uh, and the reason being is, uh, I'll show you. So there's a little bit of toner there and a good bit more right in that general area. Uh, it should not be puffing out that much toner. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's my fault. Um, either one, I haven't replaced the, the filter um, on the back of this machine uh, for a little while and I have a new one to throw in there. Uh, or two, I had done something incorrect uh, inside and it was causing a lot of dust. I don't want to admit it, but I may have forgotten to take out the two screws on my magenta drum unit. Uh, it ran actually for quite a while that way, but as you can see, it got a little dirty. Uh, but got to open it up. Let's see if we can't get this thing running. So this is what will happen to you uh, if you have the same problem I'm having. Uh, it's just, it says we're totally out of uh, two of the colors and the other ones are on their way out. And I checked, uh, there's toner in each one of these things and it doesn't really matter. I could probably actually throw some new ones in too and it just does not, it does not recognize, it does not spin up. So uh, I'm not exactly sure where I need to look in here because I've never had this apart before. Uh, my experience was more with the 6500, but I'm pretty sure if I open this up, there ought to be, there's probably dirt everywhere and that's just gonna be a dead giveaway. actually cleaner in there than I thought. I was expecting to see a lot more dirt back here. Well, I'm in here, might as well pull out this old filter. I got a new one. Two, three, 2020. You know what? I think I must have put this thing in here. I think I owned this 2020. It's 2021. No, I bought this in 2021. Oh shoot, I forget. No, 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 it was last year. Anywho, I got a new one. And I'm pretty sure once I get behind here, uh, this is where the motor and clutches and toner conveyance and all that stuff is. That's where I'm hoping to find a dirty sensor. Well, I don't think this is gonna be something simple. I was just hoping to find something real easy. Uh, but I got to keep on working on some other things. I'm not in a hurry to get it fixed, so it's going to have to wait. That'll be good. It'll give me a little bit of time to think about a game plan of what I'm going to do. Okay, here I am a couple days later. I had to stop uh, looking into this and get other printing done. And I got all that finished. And it's the end of the day here. And I want to try something uh, because I reached out. Uh, to another viewer uh, to see if they could give me some feedback on where I should start looking before I just start taking stuff apart. And um, they, if, if you're watching right now, you are my favorite person because um, you pointed out two options, either a, a bearing uh, inside there or a bushing of some sort uh, could be cracked, which I don't think it is because I don't hear any grinding or any movement when uh, it should be pushing the toner forward. So something is affecting the unloading of toner 
from all four toner containers. Uh, and they mentioned option two, uh, there could be an ICP that is blown, uh, integrated circuit protection. Basically, it's a, a fuse that's soldered in. And I fixed one of these back with my C6500 years ago and ran it for many years since then. So when I heard that, I was like, sweet, I can do that. Let's, uh, let's look inside here. So uh, we know it is either gonna be ICP2 or ICP3. Okay, so depending on what it is, it's gonna be ICP2 or ICP3. Um, either the toner supply motor or the clutch one of those is not working so I'm gonna test the continuity of both of those right, get uh, the old multimeter out here FYI I bought this when I was in high school when I started uh, learning about electronics in my electronics class this thing's probably like six bucks and it as you can see has been through quite a bit I mean that's all you need I should probably upgrade but this still works fine bit of tight quarters in here. Okay, when you're testing continuity, first things first, make sure it's working. And these ICPs are printed on here. So we got ICP3 is right up top here. So just one lead to the top and one to the bottom. That's our girl. It's that one right there. ICP3. And this is two. Let's just test two while we're here. That's what you should get. This right here should conduct electricity from the top to the bottom, from one side to the other. That's it. Let's solder a jumper in there and I think we're gonna be back in business. Oh, nice. Uh, FYI, make sure you turn your machine off before you do that. If you heard a machine running, it was the 1070 behind us there. Alrighty, we need the iron, a little bit of solder, and in the past, I've done this in two ways. Either get a component like a capacitor or an LED and uh, cut off just enough to jump that. Uh, oh, those are nice and small. I could probably take a piece of that. Or you can take a piece of telephone wire or Cat5 cable uh, and strip that and use that little piece of copper. Uh, either one works, uh, but you only need a, a very small piece of metal to uh, conduct the two there. Okay, I'm just going to use a little piece of Cat5 here. It always blows my mind because this thing seems so tiny right here, but by the time I get it down next to the ICP, it's going to seem humongous. Come on. This should not be that difficult. Oh, this is stranded wire. Well, that ain't gonna work. Okay, this is solid. Man, I've been using that Cat6 cable for a while. I didn't realize it was stranded. There we go. Okay. I gotta hold it down next to it and try and figure out how long of a piece and then hold it with the tweezers and solder it in there. Let's unplug that just so it's out of my way. There's another component here to the left side, so I would love to just go up and over the whole thing instead of going down a side. 
let's let's kind of make a staple out of it and that should be plenty long I can put little legs on it and hold it on there I tell you what if I had to do anything more than solder one piece on here I would be moving this so I could easily get to it but you can see I'm just twisting that around I don't know if you can see that or not. This, I don't have a good camera for what I'm about to do. So, off camera here, I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the wire. Now there's a little bit of solder on there. Solder the top of here first. Oh, I should probably bend this so it's final final size I want it to be before I let it go. This is always easier to if you pull the board out so you can just set it on a table and easily do all this. This is a real pain. The way I'm doing it here. But it's a lot quicker. Now I gotta figure out how to hold this. Okay, we got contact to the top. And this is tricky because if you heat the bottom up, it's going to loosen the top up at the same time and fall off. So we kind of have to hold it exactly where we want it, and I need a little bit more of a bend in it. Okay. I can make that work. I'm not happy with that. I'd like to see some more solder on that, but not much more. Oh, I think I got it. Let's test it. Now, we should have continuity between the top and bottom here. I think we're good. However, I'll believe it when I turn it back on. Because sometimes you don't have quite good enough of contact, but that feels pretty good. Let's not forget this. I always get nervous before I turn stuff on after I do stuff like this. I just want to make sure I'm not going to do anything stupid. So to turn her on, hope for the best. Now the reality is I hesitate even showing how I did this because it's not the correct way. The correct way would be to get that ICP replaced and send the board off to have it repaired um, because I essentially just bypassed a safety system that was built into that board. Will the machine catch fire? Probably. No, I, I really highly doubt that. There's only a small amount of voltage going through there uh, and just going to uh, clutches or motors. The reality is that something else probably should be addressed too so either those clutches need to be replaced or the motor something is pulling 
too much current and there, too many amps went through that ICP and burned it up. So by bypassing that, I'm just allowing another component to draw more amperage than it's engineered to do. But the reality is I've had luck doing that on my old printer, the C6500, and it ran for years with just a bypass like that. And I think I bypassed several, maybe two ICPs on that board and you know, it, it was fine. So, good work. Ha <laughs> ha! It's a good day, it is a very good day. And thank you to the pointer uh, as to where to look. Uh, that saved me a ton of time. So all the toner's good, she's ready to print. I haven't seen ready to print on here all week long. So uh, that was it. Huh. I even got it done one minute before quitting time. Well, I think that is a good way to end a week. Let's uh, power this down. I'll clean up my stuff here, put the panel back on, and, uh, and go home. Have a good weekend. I, uh, I was super busy this week, so I did not put a whole lot into this video, but that fix right there alone is going to be hopefully useful to somebody out there. Um, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate the comments and the camaraderie of uh, everybody and uh, we'll see you on the next one.